Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In Chapter 4, Tarnum must discover what had caused all of the good dragons to flee Avli, and then confront the Dragon Queen of Nyon. Alright, Scenario 5, Distrust. The enemy is storming the Arathian border, so to gain a new ally, the Elf King sends Tarnum to secure all towns in the area. All heroes will be limited to level 28, but Tarnum and his two best captains will transfer to the next scenario. Let me go one spell power, let's do this. Mutari swept over the borders of Arathia because the knights were unprepared to meet the full onslaught of her dragons. The Arathian battle lines were easily broken by a new addition to her army, the wingless but deadly Crystal Dragon. I have received word that an Arathian knight named Sorsha is trapped at the border. She is willing to combine her army with mine, if only I can reach her position. Since Nyon invaded Arathia, word hasn't reached these independent border towns that Avli has come to help. Unfortunately, they see everyone as an enemy now. I have a difficult decision. If I don't take control of these towns, Nyon certainly will, gaining a foothold in Arathia. The Dragon Queen is powerful enough without the addition of these towns, so I must conquer them myself and hold them against the Nyon invasion. But in order to do that, I must battle these good Arathians who only want to protect their homes. Wow, that is a big army. So only Tarnum. Only Tarnum. Okay. An elven spy who has been watching the Arathian border arranged to meet you here in this field. You wait alone for more than an hour before the spy steps out of the shadows of some nearby trees and approaches. Greetings, Tarnum, the spy says. I've heard about your mission and thought something of mine might be of assistance. The elf pulls a speculum from his backpack. With this, I have watched the movement of the Arathians for decades. You may borrow it if you wish. Will you accept the speculum? Hell's yeah, Jimmy. Boots of speed as well. Lovely. Out of the tree steps a member of the forest guard, one of the elf king's soldiers. He opens the pack over his shoulders and pulls out a pair of boots. For you, he says, a gift from the elf king. He thanks you for your service thus far and for the daunting task you now embark upon. When you accept the boots, the elf bows briefly then leaves without another word. So, do we fight crystal dragons? Now we'll wait. I mean... They stand like crystal statues, the sun passing through their bodies cast beams of shimmering red light on the ground. You wonder if someone erected these massive likeness of wingless dragons to honour real creatures. Then one of the heads shifts in your direction. No, these are the crystal dragons, created by powerful magic and released into the world. Although not a real dragon, they are just as deadly, if not more so. Well. Oh, <laughs> bodes well. Magic resistance, eh?
<laughs> oh my Christ. Never stood a chance. The grass in this area is dead and a horrible stench clings to the air. But right in the middle of several mounds of sulphur, seemingly enjoying their surroundings, are a few rust dragons. Producing all the sulphur is the ever-smoking ring of sulphur, which sits on rocks between the dragons. Do you attack them for this artifact? Hells yeah. Oof, that's more than I expected there to be. Four. The fact that they don't even like... Oh my god, the fact they killed two dwarves is insane. It's actually nuts. Oof. Oh my god. These, um... Ballista are insane. <laughs> they do so much damage. Wow. I think we're good. Spells, man. Am I right? Okay, so we want to split those up from the blister and then we want to uh, resurrect. Start our next turn. Blister will take them out. Lovely. Oh, shoot. Actually didn't need to do that. Oh well. Mistakes were made. My god. Oh, anti magic. Okay, that's a problem. Without magic, we definitely can't take them on. Man, portals for days. I kind of need the army to take that garrison on. That's unfortunate. There's no way I do that without spells. Oh, maybe there's more than one location I can jump from. Interesting. Also, black dragons are an even bigger threat. Because I can't cast any spells on them. Yikes, okay. Found a lovely little gold mine. Well, at this point, we're just cleaving our way through the map. I'm hoping there is a alternative route to this castle and Sorsha so that we can actually get Sorsha's army onto Tarnum. As soon as we get Sorsha's army onto Tarnum, we're golden. And we should be able to uh, <laughs> roll... Ooh, Shackles of War is awesome. Might need to uh, get that artifact onto Tarnum ASAP Rocky. That'll make my life considerably easier, knowing the enemies can't retreat. Thankfully, Aspen has left me alone since he was injured in an ambush. He goes about his own business now, sending one of his subordinates to report about what he has learned on the area. Today, Aspen's young assistant came with troubling news. You can expect to encounter crystal dragons along the border. They were used extensively by Mutari during the invasion of Arathia. 
What do we know of these dragons? I asked, hoping to learn a strategy for defeating them. Well, they aren't true dragons, although the powerful process wizards use to create them involves crushed dragon bones, hence Mutari is still able to control them. They are strong beasts with a one-track mind. Thankfully, they neither have wings nor a breath weapon, the elf said. That's good news, at least. My master Aspen told me to warn you about these creatures. Do not underestimate them, for he has learned that one-on-one, -on -one, even a gold dragon is no match for the crystal type. Point taken, I said. Yeah, crystal dragons are, I think, the second strongest unit in uh, Heroes 3. Excluding... Um, Horns of the Abyss and any other mods. But, uh, yeah, as your dragons are the number one best unit in the game, hands down. It's not even close. You spot a band of battle dwarves coming down the road. They appear battered and solemn, but their faces light up the moment they see you at the head of the army. You are the Elf King's Mantarn and Marionot, says their leader. Yes, you reply. Then let us join you, please, lad. Our own forces were wiped out by some black dragons. We are all that lives. We ask that you let us join and we bring you a warning as well. The land in these parts is quiet, as if something evil lurks in the shadows. Watch where you step. Okay, well that's clearly a bait. And I do want the dragons. approach the gem pond to put it back in production, but stumble upon lots of frightened Arathian crosswomen hiding in the woods. Before you can convince them you're not the enemy, however, they attack. Hot damn, Jimmy. I was hoping they would join. Oh well. Time to build a capital, I think. And a homestead. The mounds of upturned earth beside the road draw your suspicion the moment you saw them. Are they huge graves? Why would someone dig a pair of massive holes if not for a purpose? As a precaution, you call for a volunteer to ride between the small hills. Meanwhile, your army stands back at the ready. You send your fastest scout ahead, but the moment he reaches the mounds, dirt explodes skyward as a crystal dragon bursts from its hiding place beneath the ground. Even the mud can't cover the beautiful red crystal that was used in its construction. It's beautiful, like a piece of art, yet you see an empty malevolence in its face that urges you to shout, ATTACK! Hmm, losing four sharpshooters there isn't really ideal, but it is what it is. Um, three, wow, that's quite a lot of crystal dragons. We, at least it's not an anti-magic garrison. We should be able to take that re relative ease with resurrection. Um, I do want that um, Griffin Conservatory for the angels, but we'll wait until the start of next week. And then I'm going to use Malcolm and Jennifer. I say Jennifer. Valita to transfer all of um, 
all of my troops from this castle, basically. To Tarnum. There's not much movement, actually. It's probably going to take us at least another turn to get to uh, Tarnum from here. It's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. As we marched this morning, Captain Valita's horse stumbled and pitched her to the ground. I jumped from my steed and immediately captured her horse by the reins. It seemed to be favouring one of its legs. Are you hurt? I asked Valita. The elven woman stood, brushing off the seat of her trousers. Not hurt, but embarrassed, she said, reclaiming the reins. Serves me right, I guess, for not paying attention. Daydreaming? I asked, crouching to examine the mount's limb. There appeared to be no injuries, so I checked the hoof. Thinking about something else, sir? Here's your problem, I said, pulling a sharp stone from the animal's hoof. The horse tested the hoof and seemed prepared to continue the journey. Captain Valita patted the beast's muscular neck and said, Thank you, sir. Call me Tarnum, I said. Alright, now we've got at least some decent amount of troops. Wow, I lost one? Oh, okay, this is a very small quantity, unfortunately. I was hoping for like 30 or 40 each. get one angel I suppose. Better than nothing. These things sure are resilient to spells. expecting four. I am very low on mana as well so I am very limited by what I can do. I can pull off one resurrection, a couple of meteor showers. Of course they resist because why wouldn't they? At least we can get the sharpshooter to attack um, one of these things. Oh. Okay, well, at least we'll put the angel there. That should uh, protect him. That's what I should have done last uh, fight, to be fair. Can't be losing that ballista either. That would be a big problem. Oh, the resistance. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Angel should be able to kill this guy. Okay, good target for us. Okay, at least we can get our mana back now. Oh, I got money. Shoot. Well. No, I need mana before I press on, that's for sure. Swarm of familiars. Um, 
I need mana first. Some of the familiars have infested this area. They dance around, tossing the ever-pouring vial of mercury around like a sick game of keep away. Do you want to attack them before they break this valuable object? Nice. I've been watching Captain Valita these past few days. She's been walking the entire time, leading her horse instead of riding it. She's been spending so much time fussing over the animal's twisted leg, you would think the limb had been broken. I have seen her drive her sword through the bodies of her enemy, so I find this expression of gentleness confusing. But I am more convinced than ever that Aspen is wrong about Velita. How could someone with such a soft touch be a traitor? The chemical smell that lingers around this small hut warns you that this is a laboratory of some type. You find an old wizard sitting out front writing notes in his journal and shaking his head. Is something wrong you ask? Oh yes, something is wrong, the wizard says. I just wish I knew what. No matter, my most urgent need is crystal. If you can bring me 40 crystal, I'll give you two crystal dragons, my own creations. It sounds like a good deal. And it would be nice to have two of those powerful creatures on your side for a change. That is a lot of crystal though. That's a hell of a lot of crystal. But it is definitely worth it. So if we can just meet up the army. It should be golden. Wow, we lost nothing to 22 cavaliers. Are you in auto combat without spells? Really? Jesus. Tarnum is busted powerful, man. <laughs> Crikey, Chief. That was unexpected. So um, I'm just going to get another hero that's not Velita just to explore. Um, just want to get eyes on what's down here. Meanwhile, Tarnum will take out that other castle base and the Crystal Dragons. Marcus, what, a level 7 druid versus a level 15 knight. Oh, and she's got both the sharpshooter. Huh. Nice. Okay. Yeah, crystal dragons literally everywhere. Oh, 
Oh, resistance coming in clutch. And they can't escape because of shackles. Nice. None of this cast by lightning bolt and run nonsense. Such a good track. We're actually not too far away from Sorsha now, actually. As fate would have it. I'd like to know what kind of resistance these things actually have. Last night I brought Captain Valita her portion of the evening stew. She is always the last in line for dinner, if she even bothers to eat. No soldier under my command goes hungry as long as I can help it, I said as I approached, and I handed her the bowl. So do me a favour and eat so I can eat. I'm starving. Valita grinned and sat on the ground to begin her meal. Like many of the rangers, she kept a spoon tucked into one of her boots. Thank you, sir. Now I told you to call me Tarnum. I insisted. My voice was a little too firm. Tarnum. Now it was time for me to be blunt. No more games. You're too quiet for your own good, Captain Valita. Is something wrong? Yes. I expect my captains to have the respect and loyalty of those under their command. Yours feel they don't know you, that you're aloof or arrogant as if you think you're better than them. What? I've never said that. I fight right beside them because I'm no more important than they are, Valita snapped. If all you do is fight beside them, then you might as well be a soldier. But you're an officer, Valita. You must lead them. What's worse, you haven't always been this way. Some of the men who fought with you in the past can't be more loyal to you if they tried. So I must know what's wrong. But Valita didn't have an answer. She promised to do better, to take my words to heart. But I wonder if she only said those things to keep me from poking further into her past. I find this whole Valisa Tarnum relationship very interesting and intriguing, especially now that um, they're actually communicating with each other. I wonder if this becomes a bit of a potential love story or whether Tarnum drives her away. I mean, either way, I'm very curious to see how that story progresses. I definitely feel invested in the story, if nothing else.
Long ago, powerful wizards were able to create a magical artifacts, but time has caused us to forget how to make these new items. I would like to learn these techniques myself, but I need first one of these artifacts to see how it was done. If you could bring me the bow of the sharpshooter, you'll be well rewarded. Oh, I can. Oh, perfect. Well, in that case... A knight holding a white flag slowly approaches your army. When he gets a closer look at you, he lowers the flag and smiles. I see you are allies from Avli. This is great news. Sorcerer awaits you on the holy ground beyond yonder tower, but they'll only let Tarnum himself pass. At last, shouts the guard. It is you. We were getting nervous with so much enemy movement about. Some of us had placed bets that you'd been killed. Do you want to pass now? I certainly do. Alright, well, this is a game changer. Oh, and the bow of the sharpshooter as well. You step through the gate, place the key in the lock and click. It opens. Do you want to pass through now? Yes. Yes, I do. So that's pretty much just a freebie for us. Alright, I'm pretty sure we can end this mission quite quickly from now on. <laughs> Got no money. Um, all right. Whitestone. I've developed a habit I like better than letting Aspen beat me at chess every night. At least once a week I join the work crews working under my Master of Supplies, Kerbin. The Dwarf is a harsh boss, but he's good to his men. As long as they work hard, they get the best food and ale. Now I finally understand why experienced soldiers would give up the battlefield for these mundane jobs. Last night, after all the work was done, I shared some ale with Kerbin. Don't you go kicking Valita out, he said after he downed several mugs. I don't plan to, I said. You're an idiot for kicking her out. I didn't see I was. What kind of stupid leader kicks out his best ranger? I'm not kicking her out, I shouted. Kerbin tipped back his mug again, then slurred. Glad I could change your mind. <laughs> very good, very good. Ah, exactly what I needed. Here is the reward I promised. You still wish to trade the bow of the sharpshooter, yes? <laughs> Hell no. In what world is that a good trade? That's horrific. <laughs> Not all quests are good.
Beautiful. So I think we're just going to be absolutely blitzing through the rest of this uh, this mission from this point on, at least anyway. The moment I called an end to the march last night, I grabbed Kerbin and pulled him to the side. What was all that about a couple of nights ago? I said. Kerbin shifted uncomfortably, as if he had made a mistake. I wasn't supposed to mention anything, but I felt like punching you out. I couldn't hold it in, Kerbin said. What made you think I was going to dismiss Velita? She told me, something about her not leading her men right, Kerbin said. I'm just trying to understand her, that's all. You're right, she's one of my best fighters, but her leadership skills have dwindled lately. She'll get better, you're she, Kerbin said. If I didn't know the dwarf better, I would swear he was begging. I hope so, I said. I don't understand why Inferno Towns never, or AI, never actually go for that upgrade. The plus one spell power. It's such a freebie. Let's go Ashcombe. Take out this other base that's over here. Wow. Is there a base down here as well? Surely not. <laughs> right back at me, huh? Fire brand. Ooh, implosion, nice.
Right, let's go Wise Oak. This morning, as I stepped outside of my tent, I found an arrow buried in the ground just outside. Tied to the arrow was a piece of paper. I opened it and read, Sir, this is my resignation. I regret leaving you and the others to battle the Dragon Queen alone, but you are right. I am no longer capable of leading well. Know this, I have not completely abandoned you. I will hunt Mutari's men wherever I can. My only hope is that I kill many of them before I die. Valita. I crushed the letter in my hand. I hadn't realised my words had hurt the woman so much. Or perhaps she felt the pressure of Aspen's search for the spy. No, I refuse to believe that is true. And now I have lost a good captain. Oh damn. So there's a very good possibility that Velita won't be um, joining us on future missions then. Damn, she was a really good captain. Something tells me Tarnum's uh, barbarian blood is boiling right now. <laughs> I think he's going to uh, possibly come to blows with Aspen <laughs> over this. I also think he has a soft spot for Velita. It's very reminiscent of um, his connection with the barbarian woman, Yala, from uh, the first campaign. You stop and have lunch with the hermit, explaining your quest as you eat. We can help each other, I think says the old man. He goes on to tell you that he's going to take one final journey home to a distant land, and he needs good mounts that can also protect him. War unicorns will do nicely, he says. If you bring the Hermit 25 war unicorns, he'll give you a letter that will gain you the aid of a pack of gold dragons. Okay, well I haven't really been upgrading my Rampart Bay, so that's um, highly unlikely to be uh, a quest we complete. <laughs> I don't really need gold dragons to be fair. You carefully approach four black dragons who have torn apart an old well. Now they're clawing at the ground, slowly digging the hole. Thinking that they might have chased someone down the well, you attack. Easy bruv. You lower a rope into the hole that used to be a well, and carefully climb down looking for what attracted the black dragons to this spot. At the bottom, standing in icy water to your waist, you explore the darkness with outstretched hands, until something sharp pokes your palm. It feels like a crown, but strangely, even though the artifact has been in the cold water, it is still warm to the touch. You carry it back with you to the sunlight, chuckling that you now have the crown of Dragon Tooth instead of the Dragon Queen Mutari. Hell is a yeah. Wonder if that um, artifact transfers. I'm going to assume not, but it'd be cool if it does. Kerbin scowls whenever our eyes meet, so I have not joined his labourers this week. I think he blames me for Valita's departure. Perhaps I am at fault, but I do not regret confronting Valita about her failures. I have a responsibility to everyone under my command. It would have been far worse if her men had hesitated in battle because they did not trust her orders. But I feel guilty as well. What could be bothering Valita so much that she would refuse to tell me? If only she had confided in me. I think it'd be easier if I went from Whitestone, actually. Hmm. 
And this is going to be a pretty tough fight. I will say though, that could have been a hell of a lot worse. Resistance coming in clutch there. I to believe that wood is the one thing I don't have. find a young man hiding in his hut. As you approach, he brandishes his spear and says, Go away! I'm not afraid to use this! What I have is for my master, the brave knight Sorsha. Interesting. Let's uh, send Sorsha over here, see what, see what he's got. Alright, let's go to Fortune Keep, take care of uh, Aiden. And then we'll uh, see what Sorsha gets, and then take out Red, and that'll be that, I think. Okay, so they've got quite a lot of heroes, but they're all in one nice little area, so we should be able to pop them off quite quickly and easily. Found that base. Right, let's just use some money just to get all the resources. We've got so much money, we might as well use it. Magic mirror. Yeah. I found Aspen playing chess with the Centaur Captain, winning, of course, and waited until the game was complete. I pulled up a stool across the board from my elven advisor. Good luck, said the Centaur Captain. He's a crafty one. I know, I said, as I replaced the pieces on the board. Good day, Tarnum, Aspen said. I'll play you one game, but it's information I want, I said as I made the first move. What information would that be? Knowing you, you've been looking for Captain Valita. Have you found her yet? No, not yet. At least Aspen didn't try to lie. When you do, I want to know. And I mean this more than anything I've ever said to you, Aspen. I want to be the first person to talk to her. You hear? I said, nearly crushing the chess piece in my hand as I spoke. Aspen smiled, nodded, and made his next move. An hour later, I lost the game. <laughs> Standard. I wonder if Tarnum ever actually uh, <laughs> beats uh, Aspen at chess. I mean, like, forget Mutari, but uh, Aspen and chess is the final boss of the game, <laughs> to be clear. Actually, the more I think about it, the more cool I think that would be as like a uh, 
just after you beat the game, like you end up in like a little uh, chess mini game with Aspen, and that's how you uh, get to the score screen. <laughs> you have to beat um, Aspen at a game of chess. That would be so fun. Definitely won't happen, I'm sure, but um, it would be cool if it did. <laughs> Certainly be different. Uh, not too bad. Right, what's she got for Sorsha? It's really you, Master! Sorsha, I've been holding on to your breastplate of brimstone if you commanded. I protected it with my life. Shall I help you put it on? The squire says. I mean, sure, whatever. <laughs> That was probably a little bit anticlimactic. I thought I'd get like, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but not that. <laughs> mm. Ooh, definitely want to grab that. Alright, Red has been vanquished and victory is ours.